G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, I thought I'd do something a little bit different today, so I thought I'd start off with some stories and we'll get into the market cap stuff uh, at the very end. But I found an interesting story. Polkadot, its price hits a record high, pushing market cap past $10 billion. So, we go down here, it has risen 38% in the last 24 hours. So it's now like $11.36. At the time of uh, this it was anyway. I'm not sure exactly what price it is now. Uh, well, let's go and have a look. We'll have to refresh this. This will probably be a bit old. What do we got Polkadot at? Yeah, $11.15. Uh, $11. So there you go. Polkadot pulled back a little bit since the eleven thirty six, But, you know, if you got into Polkadot at, you know, $5, which is what it was for a while, uh, in a matter of a couple of weeks to months, you've doubled your money. That rarely happens anywhere else. You, you're going to be hard up to find another market where you can do that. I can tell you a place where you might be able to do that, but the odds are against you, and it's called a casino. Uh, and I definitely don't recommend that. I, I, I'm, I'm not really a gambler, and I have the odd sort of punt here and there on you know, some race day or something that we have in, have in the local kind of place. You know, the Australian uh, horse race, the Melbourne Cup, I might, you know, put 10 bucks, 20 bucks into that or something, but generally I'm not a gambler. Uh, and as always, I need to start at, you know, I need to state that I'm not a financial advisor, so please don't use this as financial advice. Just a bit of education, that's all it is. That's all it is, sorry. So yeah, I mean, I got into Polkadot at five bucks and so it's $11, so I've doubled my money. Now, I got in uh, when it kind of hit an all-time high at about five dollars and then I watched it drop down lower and I just sat with it, trusting in it, uh, and it's finally started to make some money back. Now, the scary thing is, this is the start. If you've, you know, seen all the cycles, you know, hopefully this isn't your first time uh, to my channel on crypto, but if it is, welcome. Uh, and you'll have to go back uh, to have a look at this, and, and we can have a look when we get to the charts. But this is the, the early part of what is a bull cycle. Again, if we just go based on what's happened uh, in previous history, and, and we've only got a few to go by, but generally the bull run starts after a halving. We had the halving in May last year, so it's been kind of going for a while, but it really starts once you start to break the all-time highs of Bitcoin. Now we did that not too long ago, and really it sort of generally happens around about sort of, you know, well now, really January, the start of the year after the halving is when things really start to move. You know, you can you can reach the old all time high a little bit earlier, and we did that, but things are just really starting to move now. You know, Bitcoin's gone from, I think it got down to $3,800, it's now up to, you know, basically $40,000. We got to nearly forty two. We pulled back to thirty, and now we're uh, sort of sitting around about sort of $38,000. So that's the volatility of crypto, but things are really going to start to heat up here. And look, I don't like to do price predictions because I really don't know. It's, you know, you can do all this stuff and all the rest of it. You know, there's all these, you know, work out the, the price of the market cap and blah, blah, and divided by this and all that. But look, that's that's only telling you what will happen if it gets to there, and that's great. We don't know if it's going to get to there, though. That's the problem. That's all uh, human psychology, and you know, uh, the market will will do what it wants, and it's driven by human psychology. But you know, if I have to take a guess, and that's all it is, is I think poker duck can go to fifty bucks pretty easy. In all fairness, I don't think that's going to be too hard, and I'll tell you why. Here's the Ethereum chart. Now this is going back to 2017. So this is early January in 2017. So it's $7.21 Ethereum. And by, this is the sort of, what is it, the 25th of December 2016, it's $7. What does it do basically a year later? $1,400. So currently Polkadot, which is, you know, similar to Ethereum, and, you know, the last bull cycle was not institutional driven. We didn't have all the on-ramps and that. So I think to say that Polkadot can get to $50, I think it can do that pretty easy. Again, not financial advice, just my personal opinion. I would not be surprised if Polkadot goes a whole lot higher than $50. Maybe, you know, $100, 200 300 400 500 it could do something similar to Ethereum. Now it could, I'm not saying it's going to, we have Ethereum, 
a lot of people are putting money into Ethereum. But I can remember back here, there was NEO and there was EOS and there was LISC and there was all these other things. There was even Cardano. So there was plenty of competition like Ethereum had and it has plenty of, and Polkadot has plenty of competition now. But I don't think it's out of the question to think that Polkadot couldn't do this. I'm just not, I'm just not going to go out there and say it will do this. But I think to say it could go $50 is quite conservative. And look, that's basically a 10x from here. The altcoins, they are already starting to do crazy things. And we're going to look into that. But so Polkadot, I like Polkadot and I'm bullish on it. And again, I got into it at 5 bucks. I watched it <laughs> drop down to I think about $3. Uh, and was ready to write it off. Uh, and now it's started to come back. And I'm still bullish on it. So Polkadot, yeah, doing extremely well. Oh, God, XRP. You know, it's just bad news after bad news. Now, I don't want to fight XRP. I don't want people to think that I'm saying it's dead or anything. But Grayscale are now going to dissolve the XRP trust, XRP trust due to the SEC's Ripple lawsuit. So they're going to basically sell off uh, all of their uh, XRP most likely. And that will likely affect the price as well. Uh, look. XRP have got one hell of a battle uh, in front of them, and even if they settle with the SEC now and they're just they are declared a security, I'm just not sure if they can come back uh, from it in any major way. But look, I could be wrong. Uh, and again, I sold most of my XRP. I still have some uh, just sitting there on the offhand that you know it does something crazy, but things aren't looking good, and uh, you know this is concerning, uh, particularly. Uh, with such a big company. And look, there's plenty of other places. So here we go. So EU crypto payment processor to remove XRP uh, following the SEC charges. So European cryptocurrency payments company CoinGate has joined the likes of Coinbase and Binance US to remove Ripple from its services. The firm justified its decision with the SEC changes uh, brought on the payments processor of many of its partners had already stopped utilizing the XRP token. So it is just... You know, more and more bad news. I don't want to believe that XRP is dead, but things aren't looking good at the moment. Uh, and look, there could be some crazy gains from XRP still, and you know, who knows what happens. But I am glad I sold most of mine. I just need clarity first. I need to know whether it's a security or not. Uh, and then, you know, maybe I jump back into XRP. We'll have to wait and see. All right, retail crypto buyers bullish as eToro eToro struggles to meet demand. This is going to happen with a lot of places like Square Cash App and PayPal and all of that. Eventually, all the Bitcoin that they've bought and buying is just going to start drying up. It's going to get harder and harder to get. And that is when the price squeeze is really going to start and we're just going to see it move. Uh, and again, Bitcoin's going to move in crazy ways. Wait until you see what the altcoins do. So according to a recent notice uh, from trading giant eToro, Customers have been advised that there could be disruptions to its cryptocurrency trading services due to unprecedented demand. So again, we saw that pullback and everyone got worried and there's everyone trying to FUD and tell you, oh, you know, it's going to do this and do that and blah, blah, it's going to retrace and it's probably going to go back to, you know, 14, 15,000. And look, it could have, it absolutely could have and it still could. It's just unlikely. eToro, obviously, there's mass demand for it. PayPal has mass demand for it. Um, Grayscale has mass demand for it. When we had this pullback to 30,000, I think there was $10 billion worth sunk into uh, Bitcoin when it got down to $30,000. The dips are being bought at the moment. And again, someone who's buying at $30,000, they're not looking to sell at $35,000 or $40,000. It just, it does nothing for them unless they've bought you know, billions of dollars worth of cryptocurrency, like, you know, Bitcoin, uh, and it goes up to you know from 30,000 to 40,000 well they made a 25 percent gain yeah maybe they might sell some of it and take that money but really they're probably you know if they've done their homework they know the uh potential is a whole lot higher so again for me 30,000 uh if there's been a good level of buying at 30,000 then i wouldn't expect us to see you know any big dips until maybe 50 sort of 60,000 then because again 10 billions is not you know, chump change and they've jumped in. So really it's only the kind of the big whales that have been in forever that may decide to sell at 50,000. But again, all they're going to do, you know, is uh, shake out the weak hands. You know, the institutions 
Uh, again, if they're not just trying to make a quick dollar and a quick flip, they're going to be here for the long term. So they're going to have bought their, you know, Bitcoin again at thirty thousand. If the price goes down to twenty thousand dollars in a year's time, they're probably not going to worry. They've done their research. They know that it's going higher uh, later on. So yeah, I don't see a major dip still at the moment. Uh, at least a lasting one until maybe about fifty thousand now. And if it doesn't happen at fifty thousand, then I'm thinking somewhere around kind of. You know, seventy, eighty thousand dollar level. But again, that's all just speculation by me. It's not financial advice. Uh, it, again, it's just the demand is so high at the moment. It'd only be some massive whales that would want to, you know, sell at the moment. That you know, don't get me wrong. I'm sure they're selling a few little bits and pieces here and there just for profit and to stay liquid. But they won't make big uh, sell-off moves until much later because they know it's just going to get bought up uh, and they'll never see it again. All right, next one. So Anchorage granted U.S. Uh, first national crypto, crypto. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> crypto bank charter. With acting controller Brooks on his way out the door, the ACC has given its first digital bank charter. Uh, Custody Pioneer Anchorage is the first crypto firm to see a charter from the U.S. National Bank regulator. Per a Wednesday announcement from the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, Anchorage will have conditional conditional authorization to operate as a trust institution nationally. The charter is the first of its kind, part of an idea of a fintech charter stretching back to the Obama years, but which has been accelerated under the leadership of acting controller Brian Brooks, formerly of Coinbase's legal team. I am really sad to see him go and I, you know, I hope he stays in the crypto uh, space somehow. Um, you know, I, I think he's yeah, done a great job. Um, and look, First National Crypto Bank Charter. There you go. Uh, adoption is happening. So people talking about, you know, Bitcoin's going to, you know, crash and go to zero, you know, not to zero. I don't know if anyone says it's going to go to zero anymore, except for Peter Schiff. But how could it crash that far if all this is happening? It just won't. It, no one's going to let it happen. Again, if people are still piling into it at 30,000, it's probably not going to go below 30,000. Uh, in the sort of long run short term yeah absolutely we could have a pullback maybe it goes to you know 20,000 tomorrow because some whale decides yep now's the time I'm gonna you know take these profits but I just can't see it happening they're watching the news and seeing stuff like this and going now nah, I reckon you know Bitcoin's gonna go to at least a hundred thousand and so if they think it's going to at least a hundred thousand and I'm not saying that's what they're thinking they might be thinking a whole lot more why would they sell it at 30 they probably would go, no, nah, I'll wait till it gets over 50,000. It's got to be at least over 50,000 before I'm even going to look at start, you know, selling major parts of their shares off. But then again, if they think it's going to 300,000, why would they be selling at 50,000 unless they think it's going to go cheaper in the future and they can buy it back cheaper? Otherwise, they just won't be doing it. And anyway, we'll wait and see uh, what their price is. We'll, you know, it, it will show itself on the chart soon enough. All right. Ethereum network is being turbocharged by Layer 2 solutions. With Ethereum transaction fees high, more Layer 2 powered platforms are emerging. This really is a space at the moment. Uh, XDAI and Matic uh, are two that I like. I haven't been able to buy any XDAI uh, from my exchange, but I have got my position in Matic and I like what they're doing. Now, the number of decentralized exchanges running Layer 2 solutions is growing as the Ethereum network struggles to keep up with its own popularity. As excessive Ethereum gas prices continue to hamper smaller transactions and operations on the network, the number of faster and cheaper options continues to expand as Layer 2 adoption increases. Layer 2 solutions have the potential to process thousands of transactions per second rather than the handful uh, processed on Layer 1. So look, th this is going to be an extremely big space, you know, optimistic roll-ups, and we can see down here, you know, uh, synthetics uh, network, th that's due today, uh, uh, January 2014, uh, but they did put out a tweet that uh, has been uh, delayed just a little bit uh, by a couple of hours. So yeah, I think this is a big space, and you know, again, this is the, this is what is uh, got, Ethereum hamstrung at the moment. It needs those layer two uh, solutions and side chains and parachains and all that kind of stuff. Really, that's the only thing that is holding uh, Ethereum from being, you know, just unbelievably dominant. You know, Cardano's a little bit faster, uh, Polkadot's a little bit faster and cheaper and that, but they just don't have that network effect. 
they don't have as many companies building uh, on their chains at the moment. And look, I own Cardano. Uh, I'm staking in it. I, I'm staking on it. I love Cardano, and I own Polkadot. I like I, I like Polkadot, but they got a long way to go if they're going to knock out Ethereum. But this is what will uh, assist them in knocking out Ethereum if these things uh, can't be fixed now. Exodus of key staff from Aragon amid fissil, uh, philosophical uh, differences. So this is the problem. A lot of the projects at the moment we have are new, uh, you know, and most of them haven't been around for much more than maybe three or four years. And look, a lot of them, the popular ones now at the moment, haven't been around for more than a year or two. Uh, it's early days for them. All sorts of things can go wrong other than hacks and bugs and all the rest of it. You know, everyone comes in with these ideals and all of a sudden they can't agree anymore. When the money's coming in, it changes people and things like that. Uh, and now you'd really have to ask yourself, is Ar you know, Aragon going to stick around? Is it still going to be the same project? You know, Dan Larimer from EOS, now he's gone and he'll probably start up, you know, some other cryptocurrency uh, you know, in the not too distant future, and people will probably flock to that. I think he started up about three now, and left all of them. Say so that really doesn't uh, fare well for some of these projects, and they're the things that we need to be careful of and just you know watch out for. All right, let's go back over here. We don't need the Ethereum price uh, anymore. All right, let's recap, uh, refresh this. So, oh, nice, we're back over a trillion dollars, ladies and gentlemen. Or we were as of about you know maybe ten minutes ago. Still above a trillion, all right, 38,000, holding nice. So again, Bitcoin starting to lead the way a little bit, up 9%, but look, there's others that are doing better. Again, Polkadot uh, has done better. Look, ETH uh, slowly but surely creeping up, but it was at 13%, so it's actually down, so BTC dominance has crept up a little bit. Gas prices are still ugly, you know, 68, it's too much. You know, again, nowhere near as bad as when it was, you know, 300 uh, in the last big, you know, sort of run that crypto had uh, last year, sort of June, July uh, ish. But, you know, hopefully it'll come down with the layer two solutions. All right, what are the big movers? Bitcoin did all right. Whew, there we go. Polkadot was leading it. Now, Loopring again, uh, good project, uh, doing really well. Um, Kasama, there we go. Ren. Oh, I'm so glad about Ren. I held and held and I, you know, put in more. And <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that Ren is uh, finally starting to hopefully live up to the hype. Uh, I am bullish on Ren. I have a position in Ren. Uh, but again, most of the positions I have, they're only like anywhere from, you know, maybe sort of 1% to 2% of my portfolio. Uh, my biggest holdings, you know, Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum. Uh, and then I've got a couple synthetics, I think is my biggest, around about sort of 5%. And then everything goes down much lower than that. The graph, so I got in at the graph. I can't remember the price I bought at, but it went down by 30%. Uh, so now it's starting to come back, which is good. Blockstack, I am super bullish on Blockstack. I really like uh, what they're doing, building side chains uh, for DeFi on Bitcoin itself. Now this has been tried before and it hasn't done so well. And there's other, you know, change trying to do it but Blockstack uh, I'm, I'm a fan of anyway and I might have to do a deep dive uh, into the Blockstack uh, yeah we'll have to have a look alright so look some good movers nothing sort of too crazy though like double digit moves are good but you know again nothing just you know completely out there where something's gone up you know by a hundred percent that is when you're you know probably at the peak mania of it where things just keep doubling you know you know, two times in a week and things like that. That's where it's really, you know, it's time to start uh, scaling out and, you know, taking some profits is my opinion. And we're not there yet. We've still got a ways to go. But what about losers? Has anything lost? Yep, so Synthetics Network, it's down. Uh, again, it's had a really good pump, so that was always going to happen. Uh, and again, the, you know, Solana, 76%. Uh, in seven days so of course it's going to have pullbacks but look they're the only ones and then we're just down to the you know the US dollar pegged ones basically that are just kind of you know fluctuating uh, around that kind of dollar mark and things like that USDC die all that kind of stuff so not many losers at all so things have obviously turned around and are looking quite nice now let's go over to the Bitcoin chart and have a look so this is on the daily. So we can see uh, in the four hour, we had that uh, head and shoulders pattern. I won't even worry about it. It's been invalidated. So this popped up and has now got here. But look, 
That's not to say this can't roll over and go lower. It's just not that head and shoulders pattern. We need to break this to really say that, you know, we're kind of out of the woods. So we still got a ways to go. Uh, and, you know, let's even go to the top of the candle week. So really we need to break kind of $42,000 uh, to say that, yep, things are back on the up and up. But this was a, you know, a reasonable pullback. So what did it basically go from here? So that's not bad. 30% pullback. That is pretty good uh, for Bitcoin. I mean, you know, 28% give or take a little bit there. Uh, that's not bad. And the good thing it wasn't like just kind of an overnight thing where it just pumped straight back up. So at least it was a somewhat sustained, uh, you know, correction, pullback, whatever you want to call it. But again, the buying pressure is there. $10 billion worth of uh, Bitcoin was bought up when it dipped uh, down around this $30,000. Hence why it only wicked down here. Uh, and I was lucky. I got in around about the $31,000, $32,000 mark. So uh, I was happy with that. Uh, and as I've said before, if you don't have cash on the sides, and I do believe cash is trash, but if you don't have any on the side, you can't buy the dip. So just remember that. You do need cash at the moment. And, a, you know, yeah, cash is still the king at the moment. Uh, long term, uh, definitely not. And again, look, you know, when I feel like we're at the peak of this cycle, I absolutely plan to sell my crypto uh, and at least half of it will probably go into cash and then the other half uh, I'll probably put into Bitcoin and, you know, Ethereum and things like that. Uh, so, yeah, make sure you have a plan. All right, last but not least. So I want to talk about Enigma. This is something I got to back in the 2017 run. Uh, and this was probably, it'll be up there with my best performer. I think I bought it at, oh, I might have got it at 30 or 40 cents and this went to $8. So, I mean, you know, that's a 20x right there. Uh, and it, and look, Enigma did that. I bought it in, I think, September, October and at 20x by the time, by the time sort of January came. So at 20x in a couple of months. I can't even imagine what it was doing uh, earlier in the year. But look, Enigma was declared a security. There's been all sorts of issues with it. You know, they paid the fine uh, and the token uh, has just had a number of, you know, it hasn't performed all that well is probably the best way to say. Then our secret network came out. So here you can see Enigma's worth 20 cents. Uh, it's up 25 cents. But it's a one for one swap turning your Enigma into the secret token. So you got a coin that's worth 20 cents or you got a coin that's worth $1.18. I'm not telling you to go out and make the swap. Enigma, I know they're still trying to uh, work things out so there's some value for the Enigma token but I, I did the swap over uh, and doing very well. Now I was lucky, I got into Enigma where, about here I would say. So I got into it at 12 cents. Well, at least 30% of my Enigma portfolio, uh, which is now secret, I got in uh, at 12 cents. So I've almost 10 x my money there, but I did buy some more around the 25, 26 cents, wherever uh, that may be. So yeah, stoked with it. Uh, have a look at secret uh, project. Now, Enigma was originally uh, built uh, by some guys from MIT and there's usually some pretty smart people f coming from MIT and it'll be interesting to see if you know the Enigma token uh, you know still has a future or if it's just basically everything is migrated uh, over to the secret network so they do secret contracts now it's not a privacy coin so you don't have to worry about anything like that and uh, again it's uh, it's not going to be regulated by, or it's not going to be uh, come after by the SEC and all of that because uh, it is a migration from Enigma. Enigma's already paid, uh, paid the fine and all the rest of it. So have a look at Secret uh, Network. I am bullish on this. It's taken quite a while. Now we can see here today, it just had a really massive pump. I do expect that that is going to pull back a little bit. But look, it might not as well. I mean, there'll be a pullback at some stage, but uh, you know, so it's a dollar sixteen now. I wouldn't be surprised if it loses kind of half of that, and then basically ends up at you know somewhere around sort of eighty ish cents. It won't lose all of its value from back here. And again, this is just a um, this is the max chart going back from uh, October when Secret Network sort of started. But yeah, I would expect to pull back to maybe sort of around about a dollar eighty cents. 
before it just starts to make more moves up. I thought I'd just bring that to your attention. This is what's happening in the altcoin space at the moment. Uh, things are starting to move and believe it or not, it's not altcoin. Now again, I bought this at 30 cents in sort of September, October 2017. So that was basically right at the end of the bull run. It 20 x in a matter of months. This is still very early now. Again, not financial advice, and I'm not saying secret network uh, will 20x from here, but it is absolutely possible. Uh, Enigma 20x in a matter of four months, and it was right at the end of the bull run. I, I'm not even sure. God, can we even go and have a look uh, at what Enigma? So this is Enigma. Yep, we're on here. All right, Max. Let's see. Is this going to load? Oh, we got to go here. Um, all right, 44 cents. Uh, all right, so maybe I, I probably got it about 40 cents and I thought it got, oh no, yeah. Have to see, I'd have to go back and check the dates. It was 30, 40 cents, but as you can see, in a very, very quick fashion, boom, went up to $8 and something. So this is what happens in crypto. And again, this is kind of where it's sitting now. And again, I'm, I, I think the Enigma uh, token itself may have sort of had its better days. But look, if you can pick up Enigma for 20 cents at the moment uh, and then go straight over and convert it into secret, that's some pretty good arbitrage right there. Now, I'm not sure if that one-for-one -one swap is still happening right now. Please do your research. I think it is. I can't remember what the cutoff date was, but do that research before uh, you can do this. But if you can, if you can find Enigma tokens uh, for 25 cents and then buy them uh, and then swap them for secret tokens, I mean, you you know, basically four extra money right there, nearly five extra money. So uh, good opportunity. If that is still available, uh, please check uh, and make sure that you can do that. All right, that's it from me. Let me know down below what you think of Secret Network. Uh, if you've had a look into them, let me know if you invested uh, and, you know, whether you're bullish on it and what maybe your price prediction is for it. Look, again, I don't like to do price predictions and I don't know what this will get to, but if it's at $1.18 now, Oof. I'm going to put it out there that maybe it goes to $100. i got no idea. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it goes a whole lot higher. Maybe it, you know, struggles to make it to $2. But again, we, we looked at that uh, Ethereum chart and it went from, you know, only a couple of dollars, $7 in January, in sort of December 2016 to $1,400 uh, in January 2018. So, and there was very few... Uh, ways to get into crypto and there was almost no institutional buyers so now there's institutional money there and there's a lot more on ramps so i would not be surprised uh if this made it to a hundred dollars but i'm not saying it's going to make it to a hundred dollars all right stay safe be kind to one another hit like subscribe uh and all get uh, all my content uh leave a content let me know how i'm going if there's something you'd like me to cover hopefully you're on that game train and I'll see you next time.